I wanted to discuss the scratched coward that unleashes the tyrant. Oh, yeah. I believe I fall into that often. I notice many of my emotional state is, is fear-based. From the outside looking in, people see me as a badass. I'm a military vet. I'm a combat veteran from Baghdad in 2003. I'm 6'2", 200 pounds and eat nutritious food and exercise consistently. I would say you're a badass, Troy. That was the, uh, that was the impression I got. <laughs> I train Muay Thai, both technique and light sparring about four or five, six times a week. My last vacation was spent getting my ass kicked in the woods by a bunch of crazy Navy SEALs and operators. That's my idea of a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no stranger to violence or pushing myself yet. I consistently doubt myself and my abilities. I'm quick to react when I feel depressed and I will get loud and crazy carrying on. I have a big voice and I use it. And during this time, I feel out of control. I'm not in a logical space here. It's pure uncontrolled emotion. I take things too seriously and feel personally attacked from the smallest things. It shows up quite a bit with my kid when, she fe when I feel she's disrespecting me. Yeah, so do I. How does, this one, how does one work with this and reduce the need for the tyrant and increase the energy of the confident leader? Why does fear overpower me in many areas, yet other areas that most people have fears I can excel? I know I can do it because I have embodied it many times in my life. You can put me in a room of hundreds of people to discuss nutrition and I'll own them. There are certain areas of my life I struggle to turn this on and live this energy consistently through my life. That is my ultimate, that's ultimately what I'm after. I want to embody the energy I can feel at times to be the ultimate leader and operate uh, in a leader mind space and diminish the tyrant to serve, to best serve my people. Troy, you and I are a lot alike, dude. I think I've said that before, <laughs> but I definitely relate to you. And then when you bring up the daughter part, that's when I flip out. That's when I flip out. My, particularly two of my daughters make me flip out. And it's so funny because I've had to work on this. And I remember, you know, a couple of years ago, I would fly off the handle. And I'll tell you what my perspective is on that, why I was doing that and how I'm working to resolve it. But I have to tell you another funny story as it relates to where I am today with this, because there's nothing wrong with the things that you're doing. The only thing that is an issue is that you say you feel out of control. You getting loud, having a big voice, all of that is fine. All that's great. Quick reacting to disrespect, right? Getting loud and crazy, carrying on. None of that is a problem. None of that is a problem. The problem is it's uncontrolled. You're not in control of it. I think Jordan Peterson says something about like, you know, um, it, you, you, it's good to be a dangerous man. You want to be a dangerous man, but who's in control, right? You don't want to be a weak man that's out of control. You want to be a dangerous man. It's good to be a dangerous man. I want people to know I'm a dangerous man, right? And, and, and it comes across, even you, it comes across. You don't have to even, you don't have to tell me all that stuff. You just have that, you just have the persona of a dangerous man. And I think that's what, you know, I have the same way. I come around and it's like, this is, you don't want to mess with this guy. But the real power is in controlled aggression, being controlled with that with that power. And so that's really the issue. It's the, it's the out of control part. So just to bring this to, to how I've worked on it and where my headspace is on the very same issue, right? Because I flip out. <laughs> the other day, my daughter was being disrespectful to her mother. And that really gets me, right? They, they, they're very, they're not as quick to be disrespectful towards me. But with their mother, they'll just talk back. They'll talk back. Even though Colleen is, she's no pushover. I hear her talking back to her, her mother, right? We're, Colleen and I are together and she's upstairs talking back down the stairs. She, I guess she don't know I'm listening or whatever. And I look at Colleen and I'm like, I tell her, I said, I need to flip out on her. I need to go and she needs to see the crazy side of me. Right. Like my, her older sister has seen a lot of the crazy side of me, but I wasn't in control. I was like, it boiled up and blew over. Now I'm more in control of it, but I recognize the, the importance of displaying that crazy side. And so I said to my wife, I was like, I'm going to flip out on her. Right. 
I'm going to go and she needs to see crazy dad. And my wife being, you know, the mother and not, you know, a little different. She's like, please don't do it. Don't do it. You don't need to flip out. So I started giggling. I am laughing. I'm laughing about it because I realized I can turn this thing on and I could turn it off. Like I could have literally just turned it on. I could have gone upstairs as I'm walking up the stairs, boom, turn it on. Right. I will break doors and stuff. I've done that, but I would turn it on and then turn it off and walk back down the stairs. That's powerful. But I, I laughed when my wife was like, please don't do it for a number of reasons. I laughed number one, cause I could see myself objectively doing it in the fear in her eyes. And I'm like, she needs to see how crazy I can be. And I laughed also as well, because I realized I'm in full control of this. And so I don't have to do it. I just do it if I want to. <laughs> uh, Stephen Covey, if you ever get a chance to read some of Stephen Covey's work, I think it's particularly the seven habits of highly effective people. The first place I ever heard this statement said, and, and I'm going to say this to you, and then, and then I'm going to talk about how that might look. He says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space, you choose. The issue is space. We must create that space between stimulus and response. I, the stimulus and, and gut reaction, I get a reaction. I feel fire come up. I feel right. It literally feels like fire in my body that's raising, right? When particularly one of my children, just like you, man, it's like when kids are just, there's nothing that makes me more pissed off than kids that are disrespectful. But it could come from reading a, 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 a angry comment, right? People say like stupid comments. And I'm like, that is totally unrelatable, right? But they'll say it, right? Yeah, rage. The rage just comes up. And I, so I'm reading it or I'm hearing something and the rage comes up. But you got to stop and you got you to breathe. And you got to create a space that is not, not a space for you to think about it or to, or to decide on what you're going to do, but a space of complete stillness. You got to get that feeling to, to, to resolve itself. And the only way to get that feeling to resolve itself is to breathe. Never act out of the feeling space. You can act with feeling, but never act out of feeling. Does that make sense? You don't want to act out of feeling. You want to act with feeling, right? Because if you're a guy like me and you got a lot of, you got a lot of power there, I act with feeling. I speak with feeling. That's why people enjoy listening to me. I act with feeling, but not out of feeling. And that basically means when the feeling's there, that is not the time to act. If you have, and this goes in every regard, right? Like we often talk about how a lot of the guys, they end up falling in love with these bad women because they're acting out of the feeling. They're acting out of the lust. That's really the feeling. It's this desire for her vagina. And when you start acting out of that desire, that feeling for her, right? What you think is love, you make all kinds of stupid mistakes. Never, ne that's why I have that one video that says, strong men never fall into love, right? You don't want, falling into love means you're out of control, you fell, you fell. You don't wanna fall, you wanna be in control. I step confidently into love, right? You don't want to fall into love. And so it's the same thing with these uh, other emotions like anger, right? You want, to, you want to step into anger. You don't want to fall into anger. But the only way that we can do this is by creating a space long enough. And sometimes the space, creating space might mean that you say nothing, right? Because there'll be times where it's like, I can't do this. I can't do this without feeling right now. It's just too overpowering. I'm gonna go for a walk. And here's the thing, I, my daughters know enough, my children know enough about what I think is acceptable and what I think is unacceptable. In the past, I think I needed to do those things because I wanted them to know that's unacceptable. Now, if they do something unacceptable, they know it's unacceptable. And so when I walk away, it's out of mercy. I don't want them ever to think that my mercy is out of weakness or, or oblivion. I don't know that they're doing something that's unacceptable. Oh, I know, and you know, 
that was unacceptable. And sometimes I can just give a look, turn around and walk out the door. Because if I don't give that look and take that breath, I'm going to flip out on you and you know what that looks like. You don't want to see it again. So I think it's important. My dad used to say this too. It's important that they know you can flip out. They got to know your strength, but they also need to see that you're in control of it, not out of control. So I'll leave you with this one last story. I don't know where I heard this story, but it's like a old, it's about a, it's about a Zen it's an old Zen story about a samurai warrior, right? Zen comes from Japan, uh, a samurai warrior. And this samurai was one of the best around, right? When you're the best around, right? You're the guy, I think it was, the name was Miyato Mushu, Muishi, some shit like that. Well, he was the best around. Everybody knew he was the best around, but when you're the best around, people want to take you down, right? They want to challenge you because if they beat the guy that's the best, they become the best. So he was somewhere at some point and somebody confronted him. Yato Moshi, Uishi, I confront you. I challenge you to a duel, right? Fight, sword fight. And so I guess Mush Muyashi, whatever his name was, he wasn't into it at the moment. He was like, I'm not gonna fight this guy. And the guy kept like egging him on. Come on, what are you, scared? Blah, blah. And so, He's a calm dude, right? Japanese, Zen, he's a warrior. You ain't gonna, you're not gonna phase me. And so the guy is getting to the point where he's like convincing him. And so he's logical about this. He's like, all right, you know what? Fine, let me just handle this guy, right? And right before he's about to pull out his sword, the guy goes <clears throat> and spits in his face. He's like, whoa. So he's halfway with his sword. He got spit in his face. He put his sword back in turned around and walked away. Later when asked, why didn't you just slay that guy? You were about to take him up on his challenge. He spit in your face. You should have chopped his head off. And the man said, the master said, I couldn't fight him because I was angry. You see? he understood that there was no room to act out of emotion. He couldn't fight him now that he was angry. He wasn't angry before. He was like, okay, all right. He was being logical. He's like, all right, I need to just, all right, fine. But right before he made that, he was about to make that ra rational decision. Let me just fight this guy so that I can rationally move on. Spit in his face. Anger rose. And he was like, now I can't. Now I, now I can't do it because I refuse to act out of emotion. And so keep that story in mind. Whenever you feel that emotion, put that sword back, boom. Yeah, you've been in fighting, that makes sense, right? You don't wanna fight, you, you fight when you're angry. That's the worst time to fight for many different reasons. One of which I'm sure you're aware is you're ungrounded. So you're gonna make stupid mistakes. And the same thing with our children. When I, when I was, yeah, that adrenaline dump, when I was un, out of control, I would say things to my daughter that I have to go apologize later. Like, I know what I'm saying right now, but I'm so rageful, I'm gonna say it. Rah! Then later I'm like, that was stupid. I didn't really mean that, right? And the same thing with a fight, right? You make a move that you really didn't mean to move, make, and now you screwed the whole damn thing up. <laughs> so that's it. Look, there's no, there's no secret sauce to this. There's no shortcut, let me put it that way. There's no shortcut to this. It requires practice. But the first, the very first thing is space. You feel that emotion, you gotta step away, create space. And that might take, it might be, it might take you five seconds of space. It might take you five hours of space, but allow that space to work its magic before you respond. Your, your daughter might say something disrespectful and you give her that look like, mm-hmm. And then you tell her, we're going to talk later. Just tell her that. I'm not going to forget that. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> you know what that does too? Man, that, the type of calm but assertive demeanor 
that you portray when you say that. I'm not going to forget that. We'll talk later. Strikes fear. Because now, for the next five hours, she's thinking about what daddy's going to do. I got to use that. <laughs> I haven't had too many opportunities like this lately. Like, things have been really calm, right? My daughters are growing up. One of them is becoming... It's always a, it's a phase with teenagers, I think, at least with my girls, right? Between the ages of like 13 and 15. Then they, at least my daughters grow out of it. At least I'm watching them. Only, I only have two, two out of my three daughters are emotional. So my one that's turning, th she's 13 now. She's the one I almost had to flip out on because she's in that stage where she wants to challenge. So I haven't had to use this too much, but I might use that with my younger daughter now. I'm not going to forget that. I heard what you just said. We are going to address that later. <laughs> ooh, 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 daddy. What's daddy going to do? So, <laughs> yeah, man. Powerful, powerful stuff. But it just takes practice, brother. It takes practice and awareness. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word King on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.